Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve the problem that you will find on page number 367. Please turn to it, page number 367. Problem dealing with a pie chart. Problem dealing with pie chart, problem number 4.1.5. 4.1.5. Let's first, let's first take down the data. You understand? I'm going to give you the figures. You take down. We have, we have, we have 47 percent goods. I'm giving you the data. You copy it down, and you you have the book in front of you also. We have five percent of what we're going to call MP equipment. And if you're curious what MP stands for, you can look it up. It's motion picture. We have 12 percent SP equipment. And again, I don't know what SP stands for, I forget now. Still picture equipment. We have 7% chemicals. We have 4% MF equipment. MF stands for microfilm as opposed to MP. And we have 25% copier. And we are told that the total was 3980 million dollars in 1971 first thing to do is actually draw the pie chart which is which is why it's called the pie chart so let's do this shall we let's see how it goes so here's your first we have a nice circle voila there's a center break it up to four equal parts makes it easier there we go now we know that each slice is approximately 25%. Let's begin with this one, 47%. So 47%, this is 25. If you take away, if you go 1, 2, 3, and 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, each one of them is 5%. We want 47, which means we just want 2 percentage point more from here. Just 2 percentage point more. It doesn't have to be very, very precise from there here. It doesn't have to be very precise, just so you understand. Just to understand, the leftover is about 3%. You have to keep that in mind. So this whole thing is going to be the goods. This whole thing is going to be goods. And now we can erase this picture here. If I wanted to be fancy, we could have done something here. This whole thing is goods. Do you understand? That part is done. Then we have MP, which is 5%. I'm just going to go... Oh, here's 25 percent. Why don't we take care of that part? Copier is 25 percent. Let's put the copier here. Copiers is 25 percent. You're done with that part. So we're done with this. We're done with that. Let's do 5 percent now, which is MP. So 5 percent is very straightforward. Break it up into five equal parts, and you're, then you're done. One, two, three, four, and five. One. As you can see, 5% is going to be this slice right here, and that slice right there that we just did here is our MP equipment. 5% MP. You understand? Let's carry on. So now understand that this is 20% left here and 3% left here, 23%, which means whatever is left over better add up to 23%. Let's, let's make sure of it. 4 plus 7 is 11, 11 plus 2 is 13 and 23, you see? So, but you have to go in a, in a, in a smart way. So what, you, what do you want to take care of next? Take care, let's take care of 12. Not that it matters, at this point it really doesn't matter. Let's take care of 12 first. So 12 is going to be 5 plus 5 is 10 and then 12. 1, 2, there we go. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. As you can see, 1, 12, 1 and 2. It's going to be somewhere here. One. And that part is going to be the 12% which is SP. 
Now we have 3 left over here, 1, 2, 3, we have 3 left over here, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 5 is 11, and exa exactly what we have, 7 and 4. So we are almost done. Let's do 4. So 4 is going to be, this is only 3, so we need to buy one more light here somewhere here. We can erase this part. We're going to bring it down one a little bit, there we go, and now this becomes 4. And that is our FM, MF. And the leftover must be chemical. And we are all done. This is chemical. Voila. There is your pie chart. I don't know if it looks the same thing as what they have in the book or not. But anyway, that's, that, this thing is equally correct regardless of how you, how you start, in what order you start and where you finish. It really doesn't matter as long as it's put together properly, which we have. Let's do first problem, shall we? Let's do first problem. I'm going to give you two problems based on this pie chart and let's see what we can do. So here's the first question. We need the room obviously, so we're going to have to erase all of this thing. Do we have a nice pie chart? Here's the first question. And these two questions that I'm going to ask you, these two questions that, we, that we're going to put on the blackboard just now, in case you want, to, you want to do more practice, these are very similar, these are very similar to what you will find on page number 293. So turn to page number 293, make the comparison and do that problem as well. Do you understand? Here's the first question. It says, what is the, what is the approximate ratio of copier to chemical? Which is, as I said, very similar to what they were asking, what they're asking on page 293. What I want you to do now is to pause the video do the problem yourself and once you have it, same thing you're going to do in part B if I forget to remind you. And that's something you should do in every single time, regardless of whether or not I remind you. Pause the video as soon as the problem is put on the blackboard, do it yourself and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do in a few seconds time. I'll give you five seconds to do precisely that, which is to be able to pause and unpause the video. Here we go. The ratio of copiers to chemicals is what they're looking for. And they're looking for approximate ratio. That's the key word here. So, copier to chemical. Copier, we can clearly see is 25. Chemical, we can see is 7. The question is, what can we possibly do with this thing in terms of ratio? What can we write? Would, would it be okay with you if I were to write my 25 as 21 plus 4 over 7? Would, would that be okay with you? Now the approximation comes in here. Now that was the math. Now the art comes into it. And would you agree that this is approximately same as 20, 21 plus 4, which is 25? Would you agree that 25 is approximately 20, 24 and a half? Would you? Yeah, 24 and a half. Keep in mind that they are correct answer slightly more than that because it's supposed to be 4, we're taking 3 and a half over 7. We're done. We're done. 21 divided by 7 is 3, and 3 and a half divided by 7 is half. That's the ratio, three and a half to one. The ratio is three and a half to one. Of course, we can't leave it like this, so we have to multiply top and bottom by two. And if you multiply top and bottom by two, you will find that the approximate ratio is seven to two. The approximate ratio is seven to two. Let's do the next one, shall we? Again, part B is very similar to problem that you will find. One more time, I'm going to remind you on page 293. It's very similar. Here's the question. If the value, if the value of chemicals in 1977, 1971 rather, if the value of chemical in 1971 was 40% greater than in 1970, then in that case the question is, what was the approximate, and I'm going to put it in capital letter, 
you're going to put it in capital letter to bring our attention to it, even though in real exam they're not going to be that nice. They're not going to put the word approximate in capital letters. They're not going to capitalize it. What was the approximate value? What was the approximate value of chemical in 1970? We need the room obviously, so we're going to raise all of this now. And here is the question. Keep in mind that the data that is given to us is for 1971. This data is for 1971. And we are told that the total was 3980 million dollars. Keep that in mind. This is 1971. It says that if this figure that we have there, if this figure that we have there happens to be 1971 figure, that is, these are 1971 figure, and we're talking about chemicals. Chemical, where is chemical? Right there, 7%. So, if this figure that is given to us, 1971 figure, we're told that 1971 value happens to be 40% greater than 1970 value. Then, 1970 value. Let's pretend that 1970 value was X dollars. And this figure is 40% greater than what the value was in 1970, which we're calling it X. I don't have the room here to write everything down, but if I had the if I had the luxury of doing it properly, we would have defined our unknown. We have to define our unknown by saying let x be the amount of dollars for 1970. Let x be the amount of dollars for 1970. And if you were to take 40% more than that, you will arrive at 1971 figure because we are told that 1971, the value of 1971 was 40% greater than 1970. So if this is x, 40% greater would be 1.4. Do you understand? 1971 value. And how much is 1971 value? It's 7%. Don't worry about the don't worry about the dollar amount right now. Let's do it in percentage first. It was 7%. So the 7 has to equal to 1.4 times x. 1.4 times x is very simple, very straightforward. See what happens. Therefore, x is going to be divide the both sides by 1.4. It's going to be 7 divided by 1.4. Multiply top and bottom by 10, and you will end up with 70 over 14. Divide top and bottom by 7, and you will end up with 10 over 2 or 5. Of course, it's 5, 70 divided. What about thinking 14 times 5 is 7? So it's 5. X is 5. Now, what does it tell you? Do you know what it tells you? It tells you, listen very carefully, it tells you that the dollar value. Listen very carefully. It tells you that the dollar value for chemicals in 1970, 1970, not 71, 71 is this thing. 71 was 7%. But if you were to express the dollar value of the 1970s figure as a percentage of this amount, it is exactly 5%. Which, if you think about it for a second, if you analyze it logically, rationally, it should make perfect sense to you. Listen, listen carefully. You see, what we're saying is that it went from being 5 to 7. Of course, going from 5 to 7 is the same as saying going from 5 plus 1 plus 1. Are you able to see that 1 is 20% of 5? 1, 1, 1 is a percentage, it's 1 fifth. So 1 is 20% of 5. So going from 5 to 5 plus 1 plus 1, 5 is the 100%, this one is the 20%, this one again is 20%. So this amount that you see here, this amount that you see, a 5 plus 1 plus 1 is 100% plus 20% plus 20%. Think of this in dollar amount. If you don't like, if you don't want to think in percentages, if you went from $5 to $7, if you went from $5 to $7, well, $5 to $7 is the same as $5 to 5 plus 1 plus 1. $5 is represents the 100% of the original amount. Another $1 as a percentage of $5 is 20%, is 1 fifth. Another one, one dollar is another twenty percent. So going from five to seven is indeed going to one hundred and forty percent of the original amount, which is exactly what we were told. We were told that the figures for 1971 are forty percent larger than what they what they were in 1970. Right here, if the value of chemicals in 1970 was forty percent greater than 1970, what is the approximate value of 1970? Well, it's very easy now. We can figure it out. We know it's five percent. The value, dollar amount, one more time, I'm going to say slowly, 
what, what this tells us is that the dollar amount for 1970 is 5% of that amount. We're done. We just have to figure out 5%. Let's do it on the top. We have no more room, so we're going to do it on the top. It's very simple. We are home free. 10%, 10% of this amount is going to be 398. Just drop the zero. If that's the whole amount, 10% that's going to be one tenth of that, drop the zero. Well, if 10% is that, 5% would have to be half of that, and they're looking for approximate, they're looking for approximate figure. It's very simple. If you add two more, you're going to get, we would have had 400. So it's going to be 199. But since they're looking for approximate figure, it's approximately 200 million dollars. 200 million dollars. The dollar figure for the chemicals, the value of the chemicals produced in 1970 was approximately 200 million dollars. Tomorrow when we come we'll do the next problem which is going to be what you see on page number 269 dealing with scatter plot. We're going to learn how to plot the scatter plot, how to read them, how to analyze them and how to make good use of them. Do you understand? The scatter plot is going to be our next topic. And do the problems that appears on page number 293 yourself. I erased it, but the problem that appears on page, let me turn to it for a second. Page 2, I want to see what exactly looks like. I don't remember it anymore. Yes, 4.6.2. 4.6.2, page 293, 4.6.2. After you finish doing this problem, do the problem over there and see what you can do. Alright, bye now.